morning you know there's some days you just feel older than you actually are today's one of those I'm sore so it's been I don't know a few days since I filmed on the farm here um, I got a clean my mess up from yesterday I I put a boat motor on a friend's boat for him it's uh I'm not a boat guy so it was it was interesting but um I was going through the combine I did the service video I serviced it and everything and then the next day I was kind of going over some more stuff and ooh, there's a bug um and actually like looking at some more stuff of it and I noticed this um, on the front of the front of the combine <clears throat> uh, in the throat I noticed right there if you look this right here is actually a hole worn in the floor um, and there's another one starting on this side so that has to be addressed um, and I've been looking all over the place trying to find that part and it looks like I have to order it from mother deer so what I need to do, it's actually the floor in that um, throat is three pieces. There's this curved piece that ends right about here. And then there's another skinny plate. That skinny plate is the, what actually has the holes worn in it. And then it's the main floor. I'm going to replace this first piece and the second piece that has the holes in it. Um, because of the fact that this first piece is it's it's worn thin it's time to replace it and they make poly liner that it's like a piece of plastic that goes over that floor to prevent this but at this point I got to replace the floor already so I don't know if I'm going to install the poly, poly lining or just replace the metal floor well, I mean, I am replacing the metal floor, but I don't know if I'm going to install the poly lining over the metal floor to protect the new steel or not. Regardless, it's gotten to the point where I have to replace that. In order to do that, I have to take this whole front section off because this is a tilt um, adapter basically from John Deere that allows it to tilt. So basically from here forward has to come off and it's very thick steel so that's going to tell me it's going to be heavy um, there's a lot of bolts and hydraulic hoses there's two hydraulic hoses one cable for the locking mechanisms for the head and then a lot of heavy duty bolts that i got to take off and then i think i can get the forks of the skid steer in there and lift it off but i don't know um, I kind of went back and forth on doing this video, but because I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never had to, I've never taken this apart before in my life. I've never even seen it taken apart. So what's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> I guess I'm either going to mess something up really bad and you guys are going to see it or it's going to get fixed and well, you guys will see it. If I was to guess, I would say none of this has come apart since they got put together when they built the machine. I'm going to put the bolts right back in the same holes just because of the fact that I'm probably not going to remember where all these bolts go. 
but I will remember where the parts go. Next thing is I got a, these turnbuckles on the side here. I don't know if I should pull them off first. <coughs> Loosen them up first or last. I really don't know. Like I say, we are literally going to just be going at this blind because I've never pulled one of these apart before. All right, I got hydraulic hoses disconnected. They're dripping into a bucket. Um, I disconnected the cable under there. That's what's dangling. That cable attaches to this lock here. So when I put my single point hook up and hit the lock or pull that lever down, these locks come out and lock the head on to the machine. I disconnected that. I disconnected the switch here, the sensor that tells me how much of a tilt it is. Then I have the bolts loose on here. And I need to just loose back these turnbuckles off and pull the pins. And then I think I may be able to start pounding out some of these bolts. But I'm I think I'm going to pull this shield off around here, that shroud. That way it doesn't get damaged in the process of what I'm doing here. Not that it will, but there's a possibility. Boy, with that shroud out of the way, it really opens it up, doesn't it? So much more room for activities. All right, let's get those turnbuckles undone now. some tension on that. There we go. 
Okay, so technically, in theory, I got that bolt out, those two bolts out. The only thing that I can physically see that's holding these on is a bolt here and a bolt there. So, I guess we'll bring the skid steer over, put the forks in there, and take those two bolts out and see what happens. Well, that was very anticlimactic. I guess I was envisioning the thing just falling off, but I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something here. what was holding that so now what I need to do is separate those two pieces so I could get to this piece of metal because the bolts are in between the two plates. Separate that and then I can get to this piece of metal now. And that's what I'm after because of this hole right here. Well, there you have it. I just tore the front of the combine apart. And to be perfectly honest with you, that was not near as bad as I was envisioning it in my head. Because I, I was looking at this for a couple days, and I was kind of, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. We can get our part, but it's not near as bad as I thought it'd be. Oh well. All right, now get the old parts out, take them up to the store so we can get the exact parts ordered. And when they come in, we're going to put this bad boy back together. In the meantime, I'm going to do some some scraping of crap and cleaning it up and so it goes back together a little easier. I'm not going to lie, I got a little distracted here. Um, I was working on this you know the whole getting that plate out and in order to get that plate out I had to raise the drum up 
and put it up in corn mode. And in doing that, I noticed the chain was a little loose, the gathering chain. So I went to tighten the gathering chain up and noticed I'm out of tensioning. So I did some investigating and I found that there's two half links in here. So I'm gonna take uh, one half link out of this thing, put it back together so I can tighten it back up again. So yeah, I got distracted. I mean, it's all stuff that needs to be done, but it's easier to do it with this all open than it is with it all back together. So I figured I'd do it. So my mom told me that she enjoys watching the time lapse when I'm working. So I'm gonna do this one in time lapse for you. Okay, mommy? Did you catch that last part? The disc shattered on me. Flung the thing right out of my hands. I'm gonna see if I can slow that down when I'm editing this video. Caught my arm. Probably gonna have a bruise there now. Well, the last two clips I did, the camera didn't record. And then, when I picked the camera up, the last time the battery was dead in it so regardless I didn't get much more done um, just because of the fact that I'm at the point now I need to order parts and I'm gonna get those ordered probably tomorrow and I think I'm gonna just I the more and more I got looking at it I think we're just gonna put a whole new floor in the whole thing rather than replace the two I think we're just gonna replace it all and be done with it um, that way I don't have to do this again in a year to replace the ones that I didn't replace. You know what I mean? But at any rate, all right, guys, I'm heading home right now. Uh, the wife and I are going to go grocery shopping. Fun times there. And we are going to do some motorcycling adventures over the weekend. So you'll probably see those videos before you see this one and kind of go from there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.